Ohio State Senator Neeraj Antani, welcome to ITV Gold. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thanks for having me. Of course, we have to have you because there's so much happening in the country and in the state of Ohio. So let's go right into it, State Senator. My first question to you has to be about the surging cases in Ohio. We are hearing today the news that some Ohio hospitals have to now halt elective procedures which require an overnight stay because of the huge numbers of cases that are coming into the hospitals. What can you tell us about it and what is the biggest cause uh, of the surge in cases in Ohio right now? Well, you know, listen, what's going on in Ohio is going on all across uh, the United States and, and the UK and, and other countries uh, as well. And so, you know, at this point, you know, the best thing that we can do to combat, you know, COVID-19 is to get more and more people vaccinated. Uh, in fact, this week, Ohio hit 60 percent of Ohioans have now received their first dose. And so, you know, I think we're well on our way to, to combating it. Right, but the healthcare systems or the hospitals that are overwhelmed, how bad is the situation there? Uh, what could you tell us about that? Well, it's, it's certainly not as bad as it was during the peak of, uh, you know, COVID in, in the last 15 months. But, uh, you know, look, I think, again, the best way to combat uh, COVID-19 at this point is to get people vaccinated. Yeah, and it's so important if we, you know, for us to raise that awareness on vaccinations. You know, let me ask you now a question that's been a question all across the country about schools, about children, about teachers and what should be done. Since you support getting the vaccines, do you think there should be a vaccine mandate for school staff and teachers in the schools? And also when you're looking at students, do you think they should be wearing masks? Well, you know, listen, uh, as uh, all of the other vaccines, they have conscious medical and religious exemptions. I believe in those exemptions, just as every other uh, vaccine in Ohio and, and across the country has. Uh, and so, you know, I think we should keep uh, those exemptions. Right. But um, my question to you is, how are you looking at the school situation? What has been going on in some schools? I know some schools in Ohio had to uh, shut down a few of them because of the cases of COVID-19. What is being done to prevent that now? Well, you know, the, the science actually is that spread at schools is very minimal, just as they are at, at restaurants. Most of the spread comes from familial gatherings uh, and within families. And so, uh, you know, our, our schools, our safe transmission among students is actually very low. The younger you are, the less likely, you know, the virus is transmitted. Right. You know, let's now talk about what's happening in your district in terms of COVID-19. What could you tell us about what's going on in your district and how it's impacting, especially the South Asian population? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's impacting the South Asian population more than, than any other. But right. um, look, I think what's what's happening in my district is, you know, the same thing that's happening across the country is that, you know, there there is a little bit of a rebound of, of cases due to the variant. But but again, the best thing that can be done is to get, you know, more and more people vaccinated. Right. Do you also agree with the recommendation of masking indoors and also getting the vaccine as much as possible? Uh, you know, look, I, I think at this point, um, you know, if you are going to get the vaccine, you're going to get it. And if you don't, uh, you know, you're at risk. And so, you know, if you are afraid of the risk of getting COVID, then you should get vaccinated. And that's the best alternative. You know, when you are looking at the South Asian population in your district, I'd like to know what have been their biggest issues since last year, according to you, and what is being done for that? Well, you know, obviously, uh, you know, South Asians, not just in my district, but across Ohio and the country, uh, many are frontline health aware care workers with one in seven patients in, Ohio, in America uh, being seen by an Indian American physician. And so, you know, protecting uh, our physician population with personal protective equipment, PPE, uh, with the vaccines and making sure they got it first, which they did. Uh, all of that, I think, is extremely important. I think we've come a long way uh, in protecting our physician population uh, against COVID-19. What's your message to families about getting vaccinated, especially the South Asian Americans that you're reaching out to right now? Well, again, look, I think that it is uh, the best way for people to return to normal. Those who are, you know, afraid of the risk of getting uh, COVID-19 is, is the best way to solve that is to get vaccinated. And I think that, you know, it's important to understand that, you know, while the vaccine, um, you know, is 95% effective against getting COVID, it's actually 99.9% .9 effective in keeping you out of the hospital and alive. 
Yes, of course. Let's now talk more about your district and more issues that I'd like to discuss with you. What is happening with the economy and especially small businesses? They are the backbone of our country. Um, you know, what is happening in the state of Ohio for it and what resources are available for these businesses? Yeah, well, you know, Ohio fully reopened uh, in, in late June. And so I think that, you know, we're starting to see, you know, the economy rebound. The unemployment rate is almost what it was of, of the pre-COVID time. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we're seeing uh, things really normalize, particularly with, you know, the very affected industries. But I think that, you know, the biggest problem now is consumer confidence, is ensuring that, you know, people feel comfortable uh, going out and taking trips and going to bars and restaurants and, uh, you know, living their everyday lives and going to concerts and sporting events and all those parts of our economy. And I think that, you know, again, the best way to do that is to ensure that everyone is vaccinated. Let me ask you something. Since you're a state senator, what kind of federal help does the state of Ohio still need in terms of the economy? Well, I don't think we need any more. We've received uh, billions of dollars in federal aid. Um, you know, again, I'm, I I fear that it was too much and that, you know, we're, we're now giving it out to, to people, uh, you know, directly. Uh, and and it's, it's increasing our, our federal debt, which, you know, will be on the backs of Ohioans for generations to come. But, you know, we've received billion, billions of dollars in aid. We've distributed billions of dollars in aid. And there's a few, uh, you know, a couple more dollars that I'm sure will be distributed, you know, very shortly. What have you felt about the Biden administration and how they have handled the economy of this country for the last year and how it's affected the state of Ohio? Well, you know, I, I really don't think that, uh, you know, President Biden has done much. I mean, I really think it's been states that have been, you know, leading. He, he came in and said he would do a lot, which, you know, he hasn't. Uh, thankfully, I think that, you know, we've been able to block, you know, the $15 minimum wage and, and you know, some other things that would be capital gains tax increase that would be disastrous uh, for our economy. But, you know, I really I really don't know what what he's been doing. What, um, how would the infrastructure plan that keeps on getting debated, um, you know, in the U.S. Congress impact uh, Ohio? Well, I mean, uh, again, I think that, you know, this is one that was negotiated by Rob Portman, Senator from Ohio, a Republican, that was, you know, a lot more palpable um, and um, palatable, rather, than uh, the original Democratic proposals, but the, the one that received you know, Republican compromise is, is much smaller and I think much more affordable at our federal government. And, you know, I think will we'll be used hopefully to to fund, you know, roads and bridges and, and to repair our, our roads and bridges. Right. Who do you think should be paying for these? You know, who should be taxed, according to you? Because that's been the biggest debate of all. Well, you know, I support the tax cuts from 2017 at the federal level. You know, the state level, we continue to, to cut taxes. Um, you know, look, uh, uh, every Ohio and American pays their fair share in taxes. Uh, it's up to us at the state level and the federal government at the federal level to figure out how to spend within our means to, you know, do what we need to do uh, in healthcare, in infrastructure, in other areas with the resources that we have. You know, I just, I don't support increased taxes. Let's talk about another issue, which is of the safety of Asian Americans. You know, there has been an anti-Asian sentiment seen across the nation in several states. Um, what have you seen in the state of Ohio and what is being done to combat that? Yeah, you know, luckily we have not had the incidents that, that other states have had. But, you know, I have a bill right now to create an Asian American commission, uh, which would include Indian Americans and, and South Asian Americans. Uh, in it, you know, right now we're the only minority group uh, in Ohio without a commission that would be able to work with, you know, our law enforcement agencies to combat these hate crimes. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to, to passing that legislation. Um, how do you look at the police of Ohio and what's your take on defunding? Uh, well, I 100 percent oppose defunding uh, the police. Certainly, you know, every institution needs you know, reform to, to make it better. But, but you know, defunding the police is, is a ludicrous idea. What about holding the police accountable? What can be done to, you know, that for that issue, especially in the state of Ohio? Sure. Well, you know, I, obviously we want to hold, you know, everyone in government should be held accountable no matter who they are. But, you know, I actually, you know, sponsored a bill that is now in law that makes 
police body camera video is a public record, which will be able to keep, you know, both the police and the person being interacted with uh, on both sides of the camera accountable. Um, you know, I believe at this point, body cameras should be required um, for all police. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I'm looking into that as well. Another issue which is kind of related to it, but not really, is a gun legislation. I'd like to know what your take is on that. Uh, I, I support the Second Amendment. Okay. All right. So now let's move to a really big news. And I'd like to know, it's, it's a national news, international news, uh, what's happening in Afghanistan. We're hearing the news of two explosions that have happened today at the Kabul airport. Ten U.S. troops have been killed. Three have been wounded, with dozens of Afghan citizens also killed. Um, how are you looking at the state senator? And what do you have to say about um, this devastation of the U.S. troops that we're hearing? Well, I mean, it's this is completely tragic, and and my heart goes out for you know the families of, of these fallen heroes. Um, but you know, look, this could have been avoided. Uh, President Biden uh, has been an absolute failure uh, when uh, it comes to the situation in Afghanistan. This is you know a complete tragedy. It is a disaster, likely you know one that we have not seen for decades from a president. You know, I oppose. The withdrawal of troops. I think that you know Afghanistan falling to the Taliban. We will only see more and more of these terrorist attacks. Uh, and you know, I think that uh, if we um, you know don't uh, have a change, uh, we're going to see more of this. And and that you know Joe Biden uh, you know needs to look at himself in the mirror and you know sort of change his his attitudes and views because otherwise you know, we'll see more and more disasters. So let me ask you this, say, Senator, do you think the threat of global terrorism has now increased with the Taliban taking over and what we're hearing about this ISIS-K organization? How are you looking at it? It has unfortunately increased about a thousand a percent. Um, look, with the Taliban taking over Afghanistan, you know, they will now have a country to use as a launching pad, uh, as a safe haven, uh, in order to fund and support Islamic terrorists. This is uh, bad for the U.S., but frankly, worse for India. I mean, India is, is right there uh, in Afghanistan's neighborhood. And so, you know, this uh, is very scary when we know that, you know, that the three main targets of, of Islamic terror uh, have been and will be the United States, Israel, and India. Right. What do you have to say about the Afghan refugees? You know, there are states that want to accept them. There are states that are not sure. What should be done with them? Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I missed um, it. You know, what are you, how are you looking at the Afghan refugees across, uh, you know, the world right now? You know, people are trying to figure out, states are trying to figure out to accept them or not to accept them. Uh, I want to know what do you think should be done? Because they are trying to flee um, terrorism right now. Well, listen, you know, our, our first obligation is to those that have supported the war effort, you know, the translators, the locals who, uh, you know, the, the friendly Afghan, Afghanis who uh, supported the U.S. Uh, in the conflict and in the war. You know, we should absolutely take care of those. Uh, and then for everyone else, you know, look, we should accept uh, freedom loving Afghanis. Of course, you want to have thorough vetting procedures and uh, ensure that, that no one uh, bad, you know, is able to get through. But, you know, for those uh, Afghanistanis who uh, are uh, safe and, and are freedom loving and, and share our values, you know, we should absolutely accept them. What do you have to say about this big issue of women's rights that's being discussed since the takeover of Taliban? Um, how are you looking at it? Because women in Afghanistan are fearful. The Taliban has told them to stay inside until their security has been approved. How are you looking at it? Well, I mean, I think it's a complete tragedy because, you know, women's rights will be trampled under Sharia Islamic law. They won't be able to get educated. They won't be able to work. They won't be able to drive. They won't be able to serve in government or other positions. Uh, and, you know, we know that under radical Islamic rule, women suffer. And that is a huge problem. And, and one reason why uh, this is so sad that, you know, the president uh, has let the Taliban take back over Afghanistan. So what do you think the president should do instead right now? Well, I mean, he never should have withdrawn our troops. That's what he should have done. But, you know, I think we're, we're past that. And I think that we need to re-engage in Afghanistan to take the government back for the freedom-loving Afghanis. 
uh, and not allow the Taliban terrorists to take over the government and have a launching pad, a training ground, a, a funding stream for their terrorism that will only uh, affect us you know, here in the U.S. and also in India. Right, definitely. My last question to you actually, say, Senator, I'd like to know what is your biggest focus for the fall right now in the next coming of months? What can we look forward to from you? And also, I would love for you to share some resources that are available from your office for South Asian Americans living in Ohio. Well, you know, again, anyone can, can always reach out uh, to us for uh, any help that they need. You know, we're, we're always very happy to help, particularly for, uh, you know, Indian Americans and, and very, very happy to help and, you know, look forward to, to continuing. Um, you know, look, I think that, you know, we just need to continue to focus on, uh, you know, the economy and, and ensuring that, uh, you know, when we, you know, finally exit this pandemic, I think we are exiting, but when we finally exit it, that we're in as strong a position uh, for our economy as possible. Well, thank you so much today for your time on ITV Gold. Thanks.